Allô, allô. I am Bernard, from France. And I am a member of the Tusik Jumper family. The red jumper is our sign of the finest quality. So you can enjoy our authentic taste. Magnifique. Excusez-moi, for I am complex and long. On the palette, I am dark with ruby tints. I have aromas of crushed black fruits and jam. Combinez-moi avec charcuterie, grilled meats, pepper steak, or lamb dishes. Mmm, yum, yum. Hey everybody, as you saw from the intro, today I have another Two Sock Jumper wine. This is their No Vintage Vin de France Pinot Noir from Southern France. It is 13% alcohol by volume, and I don't know if they sell it in the States yet. Uh, I just had a whole bunch of these things sent to me, so I'm trying to figure out like where you can find them, how much they cost. Um, worst case scenario, you can kind of Google it and maybe find what's local to you. They sell in 66 countries, so it's kind of hard to always narrow down everybody and give everybody the right answer. Um, anyway, so today I'm going to be reviewing this wine. First of all, screw top. Whoa, plus one. Um, as you saw from the the intro, um, they really have this kind of interesting augmented reality app. And um, I'm just going to pour more of that in there. And uh, it does a really kind of cool job kind of letting you know up front what it might taste like and also what it might pair with. Uh, in my case, I did the Chardonnay um, the other day and it didn't quite match the descriptions, but that could just be because maybe my palate wasn't the same as the person who wrote the descriptions. That happens from time to time, and I know, and my wife is gonna love that I'm saying this, especially on camera, I'm not right all the time. Like 99.999% time percent of the time I probably am, but not all of the time. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and look at the color. Uh, from a color standpoint, Medium purple, no artifacts, no cloudiness. Now, one thing I will say as I'm going into the nose, I'm already getting stuff and I'm, I have four or five inches from the top of the glass. I'm already getting this sort of like biscuity note going further into it. It's a blackberry herb, like a, like a thyme. Getting red cherry, star anise. Yeah, it's, it's not quite licorice, but it's kind of, it's, it's kind of there too. All right, anyway, so it, it's kind of a little bit all over the place. It has some primary fruits and it has some uh, uh, some secondary elements with the, the star anise. I also was picking up a little bit of clove and um, the, the interesting thing is it does have a slight barnyard to it as well. Very minor, very minor little barnyard note. Medium body. Tannins, medium tannins, they're a little bit scratchy, like a little bit, not gritty, but just like scratchy, like if you licked a pumice stone, but without getting the pumice -y minerality at, out of it. Um, the flavors are pretty much there. They aren't as intense on the palate as they are on the nose, so you, you can pick all those things up in the taste. I would say it's probably about medium intensity on the nose. Um, in terms of finish, yeah, it's got about a medium intensity on, on the, the finish. And uh, alcohol, it tastes like it's low alcohol. I know it says 13%, but I can't taste really any alcohol with this wine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting red wine because it's, it's one of those where there's such a strong nose intensity, but the palate intensity doesn't match and it kind of it kind of throws me for a loop every time that happens. How does it rate? So from a balance standpoint, um, I have a hard time with this one. I would say for all the elements that you have in terms of it pretty much being medium across the board, um, yeah, I would say you, you, you're, you're probably in balance. I mean, nothing is shockingly out of balance. So I'll go ahead and give you a full point there. 
uh, length, medium finish, half a point. Intensity. So I'm getting pronounced intensity on the nose, but I'm getting medium on the palate. If I had more intensity on the palate, I'd probably give you a full point, but I'm going to give you half a point. And in terms of complexity, I'm not going to give you a point here. I, 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 I'm getting some of that kind of secondary and some of that primary, but it's I, I don't know if it's because of the lack of palate intensity that I'm not getting more out of it. Normally, if I take a sip and I miss something on the nose, I can kind of let my my senses fight back and forth on whether or not it's there. And I'm not getting that with this wine. It's pretty much what I smelled is what I taste, but it's not as intense as how I smelled it. So I'm not gonna give you a, a point there. Uh, in the end, that's two points. I'm gonna give you good. I don't think this is a bad wine at all. Uh, it's just, if you're looking for like, either one of your really kind of jammy California or like ultra powerful California Pinot Noirs, this isn't it. Uh, if you're looking for some more of your uh, subtle, but still kind of like spicy and kind of tangy uh, Pacific Northwest Pinot Noirs. Yeah, this isn't it either. Um, this really does kind of feel like it It does belong in that French category, um, but it's not necessarily going to have a characteristic style because of the lack of appellation. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you like today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you tried the Two Sock Jumper Pinot Noir? Be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime.